All right, so it's been a couple weeks since I made the election prediction video, and the election has happened, and you see the result. 306 electoral votes for Joe Biden and 232 for Donald Trump. Nega 2016, basically, because this was the result last time, but last time Donald Trump got 306 electoral votes, so it's it was reversed. Um, I predicted that 49 of these states uh, correctly, um, and I predicted one incorrectly, which was Georgia. So I predicted that uh, Donald Trump would win 249 electoral votes, because I also thought he would lose Maine's second congressional district. Um, no, wait, 248 electoral votes. Because, um, yeah, I thought he would lose that district, and I thought that Joe Biden would win with 290. So Joe Biden overshot my expectations. And it seems like I am the only person um, whose expectations Joe Biden's shot above. Because everyone else was expecting Joe Biden to eviscerate Donald Trump. Not only did Joe Biden not eviscerate Donald Trump, it took four days for the election to be decided. Now, that wasn't entirely because of how close it was. That was just because a lot of Biden's votes were mail-in ballots. And we all know what happened with that. But yeah, this is what happened in the election. This is how it turned out. And it's it, this is an interesting election, and it's very hard to make a lot of calculations of, but I'm going to give my takes. And first, I'm going to go over, um, of course, the exit polls, because there was a lot of interesting information in the exit polls. So, first of all, uh... There was a bit of a generational divide this election, though it was not as big as it would have been if Biden were to get a landslide, and I also think that's why Biden didn't get a landslide. Um, with voters age 18 to 29, Joe Biden won 60% of them, Donald Trump won 36% of them. In 2016, Hillary Clinton won 55% of these voters, and Trump won 36%. So Trump stayed the same, Biden gained a few young voters, but there's a caveat, young voters did not make up as much of the electorate, uh, well, young voters 18 to 29 did not make up as much of the electorate as they did last time. Among voters uh, 30 to 44, Joe Biden got 52% of them, and Donald Trump got 46% of them. Um, believe it or not, Donald Trump gained five points among these people, and Joe Biden just gained one. I'm guessing it's because many millennials probably um, turned more in favor of Trump. Again, 30 to 44 is still relatively young. I mean, you're still, you still have a majority of your life ahead of you, so I'd still consider that young, just not as young as those who first came out to vote, which, by the way, 36% in that group for Trump um, is not that bad. Not, not that bad for the guy that, specifically for a political party that prides himself on being the party of young people, 36% is still enough to have a giant uh, base. 36% in many countries is as much as political parties that win, so make with that as you will. And so 45 to 64, Donald Trump got 50% of them, and Joe Biden got 49% of them. Joe Biden actually gained among this group by five points, and Donald Trump uh, lost support. So Joe Biden gained with older voters, which honestly, looking at the primary, how he beat Bernie Sanders, which was with older voters, made a lot of sense. Um, with voters 65 and older, Donald Trump got 52% of them, and Joe Biden got 47% of them. Trump stayed the same, but Joe Biden gained two points. So with the, the boomers, uh, and I'd argue 55 to 64, uh, there's some boomers there too, but um, 65 or older is the, you know, the oldest, oldest people. Joe Biden actually gained, and again, because older people like Joe Biden, um, again, the reason he even became the Democratic nominee was because he beat Bernie Sanders with older voters. So, um, and now we move on to demographics. There's a lot of demographics in these exit polls, and age was one of them, but I want to go on to race because this was an interesting one, and then there's going to be another one, which I just don't know how to explain. Well, actually, I do know how to explain, but I don't have a definitive answer, though I do think that people will need to change their ways based on this one thing I'm going to discuss later on. But let's get into race. White voters. This shouldn't come as a surprise. Donald Trump won them by 17 points, 58 to 41 against Joe Biden. Um, however, 
However, Joe Biden improved among white voters. He gained four points. Donald Trump gained one. Hillary Clinton only got 37% of them last time. And Trump got 57. So Biden gained among white voters. Um, among black voters, Joe Biden got 87% of them, and Trump got 12%. Donald Trump gained four points, Joe Biden lost one. Hillary Clinton got 88, and Donald Trump got eight in the last election. So Donald Trump gained among black voters. Not by a lot, I mean, it's not, I mean, 12% is still, you know, abysmal um, among a demographic. They clearly do not like you if they're not voting for you um, in that number. But it is telling that Donald Trump, Donald Trump, set i think a record i think i think he set a record i think it's that that hasn't been done since like the 90s where someone got 12 percent. he did better with uh, bush in 2004 with black voters so he i think he did the best out of any republican president with this group since i don't even know probably reagan maybe maybe nixon i don't know if hw uh got a good amount um but yeah i digress i'd have to look at that um, Hispanic voters. This is where Donald Trump really uh, gained. Um, last time he got 29% and Hillary Clinton got 65%. Joe Biden came into this election, and I remember talking about this, with a Hispanic voter problem. Um, luckily for Joe Biden, nation nationwide, he did not lose as much as I was assuming. In fact, he didn't lose at all. He got 65% himself. But he didn't gain it. And he didn't get Obama's numbers with Hispanic voters. So 65 and also Hispanic voters have grown. So I do think this is a plus for Trump because he went from 29 to 32 percent among Hispanic voters. So it was a gain. Um, um, and again, Hispanic voters have grown since 2016. So it's not good for Democrats that Donald Trump is gaining. And again, you can only expect this to continue because in a state that this really hurt Joe Biden was Florida, where he lost by three points. I mean, that was a a, a devastating loss because Florida is always a state that's like within one point. Asian voters, this one was sixty-one to thirty-four, and against Hillary Clinton, it was sixty-five to twenty-seven. So that one was not that good for Biden. And with other racial groups, fifty-six to thirty-six, and Joe Biden got fifty-five to forty-one. So I guess on that one he improved. Uh, and they made more of the electorate this time. Um, regarding religion, this one was an interesting one that I actually think um, is worth explaining. If it is in 2016, Protestant voters. Among Protestant voters, Donald Trump got 59% of them last time. This time he got 60%. Among Catholic voters, Donald Trump got 50%, and Joe Biden got, I mean, Hillary Clinton got 46% last time. Joe Biden won Catholic voters this time, 52 to 47. Um, and so many Catholic voters are more suburbanite. So again, that was, and you'll see it in a bit when I explain, that that was probably, that was probably, a, it, it reflects on what this election looked like. Now, there was, of course, a lot of um, many, many different um, things this election that shape shifted and there was a trade off in many directions. Uh, here's a very interesting one. Here's a very interesting one. And then we're going to get into that big, big one. In terms of um, urban areas, Joe Biden got 60 percent. Donald Trump got 38 percent. That was an improvement among last time in suburban areas. Joe Biden got 50% and Donald Trump got 48% of them. Among rural areas, it was 42, 57 in Donald Trump's favor. Donald Trump got them. So last time, Donald Trump only got 64% of, I mean, 34% of urban areas. He gained, he got 38% uh, this time. He lost the suburbs this time. Last time he won them. And he decreased in rural areas. So many of his gains were in urban areas interesting if i do say so myself and this was one where joe biden really th this was one where the theory about joe biden was proven wrong because something you heard a lot in this election was that joe biden would gain with the republicans he would take trump's victory away from him because 
he would get enough Republicans to fend off Donald Trump. Um, and that just didn't come to fruition. That didn't come to fruition. Joe Biden got 4% of Republicans and Donald Trump got 4% of Democrats. So that theory was completely proven wrong. But now we're going to get into the craziest theory. And, and there's a lot of different uh, demographics. Um, I'll put them in the description so you can look at them. But here's the one that, that really, really just blows my mind and i don't know how to explain it though i think i i have a few answers i just don't know if there's a definitive answer for this one last time donald trump got 14 percent of the lgbt vote hillary clinton got 78 percent this time joe biden got 66 percent of the lgbt vote around there and Donald Trump got 27%. He almost doubled his support among LGBT voters. Now, I don't know why this was, definitively. I don't know what it was. But something leads me to believe that it simply is the case that many people just did not view Donald Trump the way that people that hate Trump do. I don't think that many people view him as, like, as the big gigantic bigot that he is portrayed as i don't think that that's true i think that many people do not view him that way and many people even if they do they think that his economic benefits in their opinion economic benefits um are preferable to anything else um and they feel that the money in their wallets or they feel the economy is getting better that could be one thing though something tells me that it's just not that something tells me Joe Biden has a troubling history with this group. Joe Biden has a troubling history. He has a troubling history with a lot of groups. But I think that's part of it. Joe Biden is just not that... He's not that good on LGBT issues. He's not... He, he hasn't had a clean history. And another thing is... <clears throat> Trump is, I think... I think he's the first Republican president in history... Or the first like conservative Republican president in this country who's not against, like, things like gay marriage. Um, the Supreme Court also ruled while he was president that you can't fire um, people for being LGBT. That could have maybe made people not hate him as much. And I think it's also just the fact that many people just... I don't know. I think that... I feel that many people just don't vote based on identity politics. I feel that the culture war people are just all on social media, and social media is not a representation of the real world. People have actual issues that go beyond whatever you see on social media. And I've seen it all. Like, it's, I just feel that too many people live in an echo chamber and, and they're detached from reality. And I think that that also applied to many pollsters who got it wrong. So now I want to just explain everything that happened in this election. Because there was a lot of stuff um, that just was completely just, I didn't even see it coming. Again, I didn't see Biden losing Florida by three points happening. I didn't, honestly, I I thought it, Biden was going to win. I didn't think he was going to do as bad in certain places. Trump won Ohio and Iowa by as much as last time. And that I didn't see coming. I thought it was going to be close in those states. I thought Florida was not going to be decided the night of. It was decided the night of. I thought North Carolina was going to be way closer. And Trump won it fairly convincingly. But I also didn't think that Joe Biden was going to take Georgia. And he won that convincingly. So there was a lot of contradictions in this election. But look, I got I to gotta tell you, you took on Donald Trump after four years of Donald Trump. And you got a narrow victory, and the whole Democratic Party as a whole did not do that well. They're probably not going to keep the Senate. The runoffs in January will decide that. And the House shrunk in terms of Democrats. They won that in 2018, and it's shrunk now. Republicans gained. In a year where everything has happened, Republicans gained in the House, and they kept the Senate. And Donald Trump came very close to being reelected. So it is, like, again, Democrats underperformed. And... A reason why is just because Joe Biden and Democrats, they just don't believe in anything. Their whole thing is, we're not Trump. And when that happens, that's... Where does that get you when you say you're just not your opponent? It, it, it doesn't work all the time. It didn't work in 2004 when John Kerry was saying that against George W. Bush. 
and it almost didn't work this time. So it is the case that Democrats just massively underperformed this election. And that is something they're going to have to look at going forward as we head into 2022, which looks really good for Republicans right now. Furthermore, another issue that could have hurt Democrats was the voter outreach from Democrats was just terrible. It was just terrible. I'm, I'm sorry, but look at the outreach from people that were trying to get you to vote for Biden. And it was just awful. Whereas the Republican outreach, it wasn't that good, but there was definitely, there was substance and there was, there was optimism and there, there was enthusiasm. Look at the DNC and look at the RNC. The RNC was a bunch of BS. It was, a lot of it was lying, but you felt optimistic watching the RNC. All you felt was gloom and doom watching the DNC. And you almost felt like you were being told that if you don't vote for Biden, there's something wrong with you and you're a bad person. And I'm sorry to say this, but that's just, a, um, that's not a good outreach. I think Joe Biden got 80 million votes, right? Which is a record. But Donald Trump got a lot more votes. And that leaves me to ask the question, what if there was actually a large amount of people that would have actually turned out for Biden and could have made that 80, like an 80, 84 million or an 85 million that just didn't vote? Maybe he could have flipped Florida and Texas. And by the way, a lot of the people were talking about flipping Texas. It didn't happen. I mean, look, Biden won. This is his victory. But it was not a good victory. It was not a decisive victory. It was not a repudiation of Trumpism. I actually think this victory um, actually paves the way for Donald Trump to run again in four years if he wants, which, you know, we're not going to. That's a conversation for years and years from now. But it is definitely. This wasn't a perfect election for Democrats, and after everything that happened this year, it should have been, because COVID, the unrest, just all of it, it, it was a perfect year for Democrats, and they, they didn't do, they didn't exactly do it, and Donald Trump expanded his coalition among, among, not with white voters, with all the voters that people said that Donald Trump was against. And again, it is a worrisome thing because there is not one day Donald Trump is going to be dead. What are Democrats going to do when when that happens? You can only just ride on the bandwagon of you're not Trump for so long. He's not going to be around forever. Even if he runs again in 2024, 2028 won't be a factor, 2032. And Democrats are just perpetually losing support in many places. And the only reason they won this time was because of what happened. And even then, you almost didn't. And that... And, and that's the thing that is a bothersome factor for them. Now, why did Donald Trump lose? Because if none of COVID happened, if none of the unrest happened, Donald Trump would have landslided this election. And it all comes down to Donald Trump just, he messed up. He messed up in the last minute. He was doing really good. Well, listen, I think as a whole, I personally don't think Donald Trump's economy was ever good. But it was a, a selling message because most Americans don't know how the economy works because our education system sucks. Um, and and by the way, that goes for Democrats, too. Democrats have Obama's economy wasn't that good either. So it's like, yeah, um, but I digress. Um, like, I think Donald Trump came into this year, even if it was Bernie Sanders, Andrew Yang, someone like that with enthusiasm that had a shot. I still think Donald Trump would have won. I think he would have beaten any Democrat coming into this year. He was doing really good coming into this year. And um, I think that he would have he would have won Georgia, Arizona. He would have won the whole Rust Belt this year. He would have cruised to re-election this year if COVID hadn't happened. But Donald Trump uh, messed up. His campaign was also abysmal. Um, he, <laughs> he accused Joe Biden of wanting to do really awesome left-wing things, even though he didn't want to do them. Um, awesome left-wing things as, like, you know, giving everyone health care or, you know, really, well, not even left-wing things, just populist things. There's some good right-wing things as well. Um, but he accused Joe Biden of wanting to do a lot of things that he just didn't want to do, and a lot of voters thought, okay, cool, I want him to do those things, and they voted for Biden. His cam Donald Trump's campaign in 2020 felt kind of corporate. It felt kind of just, like, the outreach was, again, it was... It was bland. It wasn't as bad as Democrat outreach, but it was still pretty bad. It was culture war obsessed. Donald Trump, he ran on, on outlawing flag burning because of the riots. I'm sorry, but no, that's dumb. He he didn't do what Nixon did, which was the silent majority message, and it did kind of hurt him in the end. He also got COVID a month before the election, which I don't, I, mean, I have, I'm contemplating on whether or not that helped him. 
and got him sympathy votes, but it definitely was not good for his optics that he got COVID after he messed up handling the virus. He also just didn't do any more stimulus checks. He did one and then decided, okay, let's call it a day. He also just... He just was not good. He just did not. His 2016 campaign was amazing. His 2016, Donald Trump's 2016 campaign was probably better than Obama's 2008 campaign. Donald Trump's 2020 campaign was Hillary Clinton's campaign. It was America's already great as things are falling apart. And it just, it didn't work. It didn't work. And it was just mess up after mess up. And hey, you have enough support and you've, you've, you've built yourself enough much you know, you've built yourself enough of a base and you've expanded your coalition and you do have a message and it got you in more votes. It got you far and it, there is a secret Trump vote, but it just didn't get you past the finish line this time. Now, will he run again in four years? That's the fun part. If he runs again in four years, he'll be the Republican nominee. I, I want to know any Republican that thinks that they can beat Donald Trump, the, Donald Trump, the big guy. You think you're going to beat the, pre the former president? Who's going to beat him in that primary? No one. So yeah, I think that if he runs again in four more years, I think he gets it locked up. I think he, there's just no way to see him losing. And well, the primary, the general is an open question. We'll see what happens if he runs, but that's four years down the road. But as a whole, I think Trump just messed up. I think he, he messed up. He just added fuel to the fire. I don't, he, it was just like consistent the whole time. It was, you almost felt bad for the guy towards the end because it was like, is it this hard to just do simple things? Just act like you care for like five seconds. I mean, like, I don't know. It was, it's just, he just messed up. And, and the whole, like, the, this whole year just was horrible for him. I don't understand how he messed it up, but yeah, he sacrificed his reelection. And now he's the first president since George H.W. Bush in 1992 to not win reelection. And he did it to himself. He earned it. He lost to Joe Biden, who I I think was probably the easiest guy to beat in history. It's just, his entire campaign was just a mess, and it just shows that Trump really lost his way after 2016. I think after 2016, he felt like invincible or something, like he couldn't lose. Nope. It turns out you could lose, and he did. Now, of course, both political parties could do some retrospection, both political parties messed up. I think Republicans... <clears throat> Republicans have the potential to be the populist party in America. They have the worker. They have the white working class, which is a, a large amount of the working class. Though they could also appeal to minorities. And they kind of did that this election. But they kind of need to do that in a way where you don't scare off people and give... Because there still is that message that, oh yeah, Trump is like a big end. Whether or not that's true, I'm not going to get into that. Um... Those are for other videos I want to make in the future. But I think Republicans could do a lot of work and retrospection. And I don't think they should go back to Mitt Romney because Donald Trump won. So what Trump was doing worked to some extent. But what Trump did in 2020 and what he did in 2016 are two different things. And people just, they just don't understand that. And um, yeah, kind of doomed them. Uh, regarding what Democrats can do, I mean, they can do virtually the same thing, you know, they can start believing in something, they can, you know, start running in something that's not just, I'm not my opponent, but that's too much to ask of the Democrats, I mean, both political parties, like, Republicans could, you know, back policies that, Dem that Democrats should back, you know, you could go to where Democrats are messing up and back their policies, or, you know, Democrats could do it first, and then take away Republicans' white working class voters, both political parties need to look into themselves, what they can do, look at their bases, how they can expand. But what I'm guessing is going to happen is Republicans are probably just going to take back power. They're just going to either keep being more conservative or not. We'll see. And Democrats are just not going to learn anything because they won. The one that wins never checks themselves. But yeah, I just, this was just a mess of an election. It was a shit show. Um, I don't know if I'll ever trust the pollster again because I kind of did. And I was kind of wrong in some ways, though my prediction was still more correct than virtually anyone else I saw on the internet. And they laughed at me for my prediction. So they, they thought it was insane to suggest that that Trump would do that well. Like, like, but I was right and they will not accept it. I mean, 
I was wrong about Georgia. Some people did predict Georgia for Joe Biden, but those same people who were predicting Georgia for Joe Biden were predicting Texas for Joe Biden. So it's not like they can give themselves credit because it makes a lot more sense to think that um, Biden is going to win Georgia and Texas. I mean, it makes a lot more sense for me to get Georgia wrong than it makes to get Georgia and Texas wrong. I mean, predict Georgia and Texas at the same time. And it turns out that is what we got. So what are we going to do? This is, so yeah, this was my take on the 2020 election. I'll make a few more takes, a bit more nuanced. This was just my general rundown. And then we'll get into specifics down the road at some point. I want to, I want to make more videos like this. Maybe I can make some just regular political videos as we go on in the future. But yeah, this was just kind of like a rant. So, uh, if, if you supported Biden, congrats. If you supported Trump, um, yeah, you lost, uh, sucks to suck, but you know, um, there's a, an election every two to four years. Um, anyone who thinks that we like anyone who hates Trump and views this as the ending of like star Wars, the last, um, return of the Jedi is, a, they have the mentality of a 10 year old. And they don't understand how politics works because there's elections every two years and presidential elections every four years. There could be another Trump that's even worse um, in the next four years. So it's like, I, I don't understand that mentality. I also don't understand the mentality of telling people if they vote for Trump um, that like, oh yeah, I want nothing to do with you. You should probably want them closer to you so you can change their mind. But yeah, we'll, we'll get into that with videos in the future. Um, and maybe I'll give you actually my political takes. Maybe I'll do a political compass test, depends. But yeah, this has just been, or this has been, yeah, I'm rambling at this point. So thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for more in the future.